Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be checking out the Blasted Rares farm. Let us begin. Okay, so today we're going to be checking out the Blasted Rares farm. Now this is technically a transmog farm, however we are farming for two keynote items. I currently have the Flawless Dranathus Spear and also the Imperfect Dranathus Fragment. You get these from the rares within the Blasted Lands and they can be turned in for some chests in which you can actually gain some high value transmog from this. However, you will need to speak to Zadormi at the beginning of the Blasted Lands to turn it back to before the invasion of basically Wad. So you're gonna to wanna to turn it back to the vanilla zone. However, once you actually do this, you'll want to farm up the rares pretty easily and you can run around. There's one that spawns here, which is right here, and we'll just take him out and loot him for a Dranathus fragment. You actually get some transmog, but these ones aren't worth a great deal as for obvious reasons, they are pretty much farmed quite on the daily. Now I know this farming route off the top of my head. However, what you can see on the screen now is all of the rares for this zone being shown for you where to farm them. Now, this gold farm is fairly straightforward. You'll want to do this once every hour for roughly around about five minutes, and it will take you pretty much no time at all in order to do. Now, if you do actually remember, some little spawn locations like here will not spawn a rare, but they will have a chance of dropping the silken treasure chest, and that can give you some additional transmog as well. What you're really going for are these fragments as they can be sold on the auction house for a decent chunk of gold. Now, the blue ones, the flawless Dranathus Sphere, it goes for me around about 402 gold for one, or a region sale average of 634. Now, with the imperfect Dranathus fragments, they're going around about eight gold each. That's because they're not worth a great deal as you get so many of them in one farming session. So when you do get one of these ones, you can always sell them on the auction house as well. That being said, I prefer to turn them in and typically speaking, we'll be wanting to head over to this NPC over here, which is called Kum Isha. And for the low level imperfect Dranathus fragment, he will give you a just a junk bag which you can turn in and also with the flawless Dranathus sphere he will give you the emerald encrusted chest. Now that we've actually given in all of these quest items we can actually pull up worth it and we can reset it and start recording. This is when we open up these and we'll see what we actually can get. We can actually take note of this up here. We can always use your loot appraiser if you so wish. So let's go with the low level ones to start off with. And at the moment, not an awful lot. We have a recipe which we can sell on or I can give to my blacksmith. And it really is a luck of the draw for this. It really does depend. With the low level one, you're not really gonna get all that much gold when it comes towards the different types of items. See, with all of those ones, it only is around about 400 odd gold for these particular types of mogs. However, if we go with the emerald encrusted ones, we always get a blue. And some of these blues go for a decent chunk of gold, like this one, which is Honzo's sword, which is currently going for 6,500 gold. Now, that's why the spheres are going for around about 400 gold, because you have a chance of getting a hold of it. Now, these items can be sold on the auction house for a decent chunk of gold, but we're really going for things like the Imperial Chain Vest. Now, the Imperial Chain Vest is one item that goes for a hefty chunk of gold, and more often than not, you will get a low tier item. However, it really does depend on if you are willing to take the chance for these, because it can work out quite well if you are farming this every morning for five minutes. Now I did this with my lazy gold making method a while back, and it actually turned out to be incredibly profitable just selling the spheres and the fragments. However, it can be even more profitable if you are willing to take the chance on RNG and selling the mog on the auction house as well. So some of these items are a bit like low, and then some are quite good. The keynote item that I go for for this gold farm is the Imperial Chain Vest due to the fact that it goes for just a decent chunk of gold overall. Now the Honzo Sword came out a bit of a shock for me but I'm quite happy with that at 0.025 sell rate, that's pretty good. 
for transmog overall and in general I'm quite happy with that I can then sell that little katana thing on the auction house for a fairly decent chunk of gold that being said it takes you roughly about five minutes to farm up all of these rares each and every day and then you can just hand them in at the end of the week and see what you can actually obtain Remember that the blue ones are worth the most due to the fact that they can give you the highest value transmog. That being said guys, that's all I have to say for this nice little tidbit for you guys. And I do this gold farm pretty regularly each and every morning as it's a nice easy one to do. Just get it done, get it done, dusted, five minutes, doesn't take that long and then I can just carry on with my other gold farming. Other than that guys, have a lovely rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon. Mm -hmm.